So we've pushed our, uh, our yellow up a little bit, we've pushed our orange up a little bit, we've pushed our green down a little bit, just to balance things out. Uh, let's just have a look at what the aqua can do for us. Aqua's not doing a huge amount for us. Um, I'm inclined to sort of leave that alone. Uh, the blue, let's see what the blue can do for us. Ah, oh, that's doing an lo awful lot for us. So let's. Ju I don't think I want it quite that strong, but once again, I'll, I'll set it to where I think it looks right, and then I'll go a little bit further, and I'll have the courage of my convictions and leave it sort of... Uh, at the moment it looks a little bit too strong, but probably won't in a minute or two. And uh, I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's just quickly see if there's any work I need to do on the hues and what this is going to do is literally push the colors around I, I, the sky looks okay I think what I might just do is see whether or not I can push the let's just push the green a little bit more towards the yellow and see what that does for us I certainly can't get you need to be very very careful with your with your values in, in, in these areas let's just see what that's doing that's it is just giving us a slightly more yellowy tint in the grass over here, which which just pulls it back together a little bit. Let's see what the yellows do. No, I don't want to go too much towards the orange. Um, no, that's way too green. That's way too orange. The answer lies somewhere in the middle. Let's just... Where gives us a nice pleasing golden colour? I think around about there gives us a, a sort of a golden colour about this image. So just... Um, yeah, maybe a little bit less. Somewhere around about the middle, around about where we started. We'll just leave it there. Um, so that's probably a pretty good place for the colour. Let's let's leave the colour alone for a moment. Um, let our eyes just accustom to it, accustomise to it, and let's just do a little bit of work on sharpening now. You should always do sharpening um, zoomed in. Some people say 50% zoomed, some people say 100% zoomed. In Lightroom I, I tend to do it 100% zoomed. So um, I've now dragged down to the detail section of our uh, of Lightroom sliders here. <clears throat> now the, the sharpening in Lightroom for sliders looks relatively simple, but actually there's a lot of very, very powerful capability hidden in here. So once again, if you want to know how, how things work in something, drag the sliders right to their extreme. So I'm going to drag the amount right up, because I know that that's going to make the other slider, the effect of the other sliders, that much more visible. The other thing with Lightroom is, if you're not sure uh, what something does, it's sometimes worth holding down the Option or Alt key as you drag it. And in the case of all the sharpening sliders, it does some quite useful stuff. In the sharpening amount slider, it makes the image monochrome, so we can just see what it's doing to the luminosity values. So it makes it a little bit easier sometimes to see what it, what it's doing to the image. Um, if I hold down the Option or Alt key on the radius, you can see it starts to show us that high pass filter style view, uh, and the radius is going to make the the sharpening effect that much stronger. Now I, I'm going to leave that down at the sort of 1.5-ish mark. Um, and I'm going to just start messing with the detail slider. And you can see what the detail slider is doing. This is clearly affecting the threshold value. Um, if you're looking, at, if you're if you're familiar with the unsharp mask concept. Um, and in this case, what I want is to sharpen that brickwork. I want to bring out the detail in the brickwork. Now, remember, this is already way too strong because I've got my, my amount slider right up. But what, what if I hold down the Option or Alt key? It's showing us that mask, and I can see now quite clearly the brickwork, and hopefully not too much of the grain if I get the detail in the right place. And then there's one final trick up the sleeve with uh, with Lightroom sharpening, is this masking slider. Now you won't see what this does unless you hold down the Option or Alt key when you drag it up. With it right at the bottom, the mask is all white, which means it's going to affect everything. As I drag the mask slider upwards, you can see it's starting to do edge detection. And as I drag it up, it's starting to mask out and mask out and mask out until eventually, at 100%, it's only really seeing the strongest contrast, the strongest lines in the image. Now, I don't want it that high. In my case, what I want is the brickwork, but I don't want to sharpen the sky. So, around about there, around about the 80 mark, means that uh, you can see the white bits are... We're almost seeing lines around the edges of the bricks. So, I can actually just apply this sharpening just to those just to those parts of the image I want it on, and not to all the other bits. So let's just quickly work once again with our radius. 
I think the 1.5 I had it on is pretty good. I don't want what I'm trying to, all I'm trying to do really with the radius is make sure that I get a good strong sharpening but that I don't get halos. And so the the halos around the edge of the castle they are a little bit visible at the moment but that's still because I've got the amount right up. Let's drag the amount down now. Uh, this is all holding down the option or alt key and I probably want to settle around about there. And as you can see that's if I turn this detail slider on and off it's don't look at the look at the the little spiky bits here you can see it is definitely doing a pretty nice sharpening job uh, I could probably drag that radius down just a touch more that's a little better uh, and there's something else I can see here while I'm zoomed in if you can see there's on the edge of the castle there a little cyan fringe so let's just quickly go to our lens correction section and just drag the slider there down a little bit and I can just take off that cyan fringe just by doing a little bit of lens correction there that's a bit better so that's with it off that's with it on and I've probably got a little bit of red in there now it's somewhere around about there sort of 15 ish um, and that will have, that will vary depending on your uh, on your lens of course so that's a little bit of sharpening. Um, I'm still reasonably happy with the colours. Maybe a little bit oversaturated down here. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Might want to just quickly go back to my uh, saturation sliders and just maybe. What have I got here? That's a yellow. Let's just drag the yellow saturation down just a touch. Not too much. Not too much. Okay. And then. Um, as always, I'd like to do a little bit of finishing. I, I like my vignettes. Uh, remember, it's easier to see the effect of what you're doing if you drag the sliders to the end. So I'm dragging my vignette slider all the way down to minus 100. And now I can mess with the midpoint to get the midpoint where I want it. So if I drag the midpoint right down, it's going to go all the way in. And that's not at all what I want, because I don't want to cover up the castle, which is the main eye-catching subject. So I'm going to open up the midpoint until it goes outside the castle. So somewhere around about there. And then I can drag the amount slider back up until the effect of the slider is around about what I want. Uh, we can be brave here. Probably somewhere around about there. And uh, having done all of that, now I'm seeing it's overall looking a little bit dark. So I'm just going to come up to the brightness slider and just brighten the image back up just that little bit. Just to bring it back into reasonably nice tones. Now, um, that's where I'm going to leave this image. Um, I hope you like the uh, the result of that. There's a lot of very strong edits in there. This is this is a brave, brave edit of this of this shot, um, and it is worth just reminding ourselves where we came from with this shot. Remember, this is where we started with this shot, and this is where we've ended up. So um, we've come an awfully long way, and um, I think you'll agree that that's a, a bit more than than a rescue job I think that's that hopefully I now have that printed out on on top of the piano in the hall and I walk past it regularly and I'm still pretty with, happy with how that looks so uh, thank you for watching and I will catch up with you in tutorial 16《Walkthrough》is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.